Hamilton is on loan to the Americans in New Orleans. Oh, God. Is that all it does? I don't even know what to say about this. Hi everyone, today I'm going to look at some of the best and worst depictions of the art of making espresso in movies and TV. As people who regularly watch this channel know, I make videos for home espresso lovers and I'm going to leave this one with a trigger warning. Some of these scenes may be very upsetting to people who know even the most basic functions of an espresso machine. Let's get into it. James Bond, Live and Let Die. That's precisely what you're going to find out. Dawes was in New York, keeping an eye on its Prime Minister, one Dr. Kananga. Hamilton was on loan to the Americans in New Orleans. Oh God. Is that all it does? This is the gold standard of terrible coffee making. The coffee that comes out looks incredibly watery and disgusting. I just would not drink that. He did absolutely no puck prep, so he just went straight from the grinder into the coffee machine. That's not such a big thing, but even from the very beginning, this is terrible. Then Bond commits what I think of as the cardinal sin of this scene. He pours cold milk into an espresso and then steams the entire thing. Of course, you're supposed to steam the milk first and then pour the milk on top of the espresso. Is that all it does? Is that all it does? It's, that's not even what it's supposed to do. Hugh Grant, about a boy. The important thing in island living is to be your own activities director. And I find the key is to think of a day oh, as units God. of time, each unit... Again, just to start off with, that espresso looks incredibly watery. His steaming technique is also terrible. He steams the milk directly in the cup, which is a big no-no. And on top of that, he's just jittering the cup around rather than trying to get some kind of swirl or vortex going. So the steam isn't even doing its job, which is making the milk silky and smooth. And then he just pours that horrible you know, drip coffee looking espresso in on top of it. He has a really nice espresso machine as well. This is a Lapavoni Europicola. It's the same one as Bond used in Live and Let Die. And it's a really beautiful machine and they only cost around 700 euros these days. I really hope he didn't have to drink that on set. Oh, I'm, no, I'm sorry, mate. The Office Cafe Disco. All you can eat espresso. Oh, so that one's a, that's a rookie mistake. He turns on the steam wand without fully submerging the milk so it sprays everywhere. That's happened to all of us. Two big mistakes here. He put the whole coffee drink in the steam wand, which is not something you would do anyway. You would make the steam with the milk only and pour the milk into the espresso. And espresso. This is a pet peeve of people all around the world who like coffee. I know it's a comedy show, so I can't be sure that they're not trolling, but he got it right once. It's espresso, not espresso. Smallville, the Talon. It's hot. <laughs> Do you want an iced coffee? I'm, I'm gonna go make an iced coffee. One of the perks of management, 24 hour access to the cappuccino machine. Message five or six times, but I can't seem to finish. There's so much I wanna say. I do have you to look out for me, don't I? Well, I know I haven't been around. Wait, so now she has the two coffees, but she didn't make any coffee. She says, I have access to the cappuccino machine, but she doesn't use the cappuccino machine. The only thing I saw was her putting ice in the glass, and then all of a sudden, there's coffee. She didn't turn on a grinder, she didn't pull a shot, it's just... there. I get that the producers of this show probably wanted to make sure that everyone knew that this was a coffee shop by putting tons and tons of coffee memorabilia there, but the machine that they have on the back there where you can't even reach it, you couldn't make coffee with this, is uh, Electra Bella Epoch. They're about $13,000 for one of these machines. They're kind of a piece of art. They're beautiful coffee machines. That would be an incredibly expensive prop for a small town coffee shop to have. For TV, we get it. It's a coffee shop, but no cafe would ever have one of these on the back and not be using it like this. The talented Mr. Ripley. Now you'll find out why Miss Sherwood always shows up for breakfast, Tom. It's not love, it's my coffee machine. Ever since Okay, so it's not the best looking shot. It's not as bad as maybe the James Bond one or the one from About a Boy, but that espresso looks a little bit too watery for my taste. I would definitely grind a little bit finer than he's grinding here. I had to promise, capital P, never to take it off. Otherwise I'd give it to you. I hope it wasn't cheap, Mark. Wait, 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 what is he doing? So he just goes straight back to the espresso machine and pulls another shot with the same coffee. That's gonna be absolutely disgusting. You have to take the portfilter out and switch it up for some new coffee. You can't be pulling two shots from the same coffee puck. That's, oh my God, that's gonna be an absolutely vile cup of coffee. <laughs> Green Hornet, Kato's coffee machine. I think it's easier if I show you. Watch this. <laughs> 
<laughs> so a small problem with this one before I get into the ridiculousness of this coffee machine, he opens up the machine and he turns it on to pull an espresso straight away. You wouldn't do this because you need to heat up the coffee machine first so you get a consistent temperature at the brew head. Otherwise you're gonna have an inconsistent temperature because the coffee machine is cold and the espresso is not gonna taste very good. I mean, the latte art's not bad. What exactly is he heating here? The coffee beans should already be roasted and you wouldn't want to heat the coffee beans before you grind them up for an espresso. It, it's basically just gonna add a horrible burnt smoky flavor to it. There's no reason to heat these coffee beans again. So it looks like he's pulling the portafilter out and tamping it down. This doesn't make any sense. Either he's tamping down the coffee that was already in there from the previous shot whenever he last used the machine, or he's tamping down an empty porta filter, which also doesn't make any sense. Okay, I don't know how much steam power this machine has, but he literally steams the milk for about a, a second. There's no machine on earth that's gonna properly steam hot milk for lattes in one second. Sit with me, Kato. Tell me your tale. Yeah, I wanna know your tale too. Who did you learn how to make espresso from? Ari Spiros, Billions. The Italians think anyone who puts milk on their coffee after 11 a.m. is animale. I tend to agree. In theory, but in reality... Just espresso. <laughs> Ari Spiros in this show is depicted as the ultimate coffee snob, and he really is. But he also makes the best espresso that I've seen so far in any of these TV shows and movies. So it looks like he's pulling a single shot. You can tell by the portafilter only having one spout. That's usually the portafilter that you would use for a single shot of espresso. He's also using a really nice espresso machine. This is a Rocket Evolutioni R. It's a beautiful espresso machine. Also, that part he says about Italians not drinking cappuccino after 11 is true. The great looking machine, huh? All that chrome. Grinder, tamper, knockbox, quality and integrity. After a full Almost everything here is really good. I don't know why he mentions the knockbox though. That's the thing you knock the portafilter on to get rid of the coffee that you've already used. So it's essentially a rubbish bin. So I don't know why he's making a big deal about it. He also does something that I used to do, which is knocking the portafilter on the side with the tamp. This isn't really something that I recommend anymore. There's no real benefit to doing this. And it's much better to just hit it on your palm, which isn't going to either crack or damage the chrome plating of the portafilter. The tamping issue is a small problem and some baristas still do this, but I definitely wouldn't advise holding the pitcher the way he's holding it. He's likely to burn his hand that way. That's also some pretty nice latte art. Well done, Ari. Well done, Billions, for being one of the only shows to actually do espresso correctly. Let me know in the comments below which was the worst coffee fail of all the videos that I showed, and if there were any other depictions of coffee in movies or TV that I missed that would have been really fun to include here. And if you want to know how to make espresso properly, click here to see some of my videos, which hopefully aren't epic fails like in these movies.